I'm Toby. And I love this rock. <laughs> it's my best rock. Rock, 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 rock. My mom doesn't get it, but I don't care. Oh no, it's dirty. Bath time. That's better. Just me and my rock together forever. I got a skateboard. Let's try it with this. Let's try it with this. What is this? Mm -mm, nope. I don't think so. <gasps> no more skateboard. I just want my rock. You guys, he hated the skateboard so much that he got scared and he broke his rock. He is very upset. He went inside. My rock! She thinks she can just find a new one? Toby, come here. I only want my rock. Oh, no. I must be alone now. This is what it's like. This is what it is in the shadow of a time. No, I won't give up. We're going to fix you, little rock. I don't know if this is gonna work, buddy. <laughs> it has to work. It has to! Now we wait. You excited? Is Rock okay? Rock, speak to me. Rock! <laughs> Together again at last! Let me tell you a spooky story of Arlo. Who's Arlo? Nobody knows for sure. Some say he's a creepy goblin. Or maybe a terrifying gargoyle. Or scariest of all, he may be a house cat who became spooky and spookified his home. But before he started to haunt his house, it was quiet, peaceful, a place where Nixie the dog could sleep soundly. That is, until Spooky Arlo arrived. Aww, he used to be pretty cute actually. So precious. Honestly, he's still very cute. But also spooky! He's lurking around every corner, waiting. I guess I shouldn't say lurking, really, since you're only technically lurking if you're hiding right before attack- Oh my goodness, I was not expecting that. He sneaks. He creeps. He leaps! <laughs> right onto poor Nixie. He bats her with his paws. He chews on his family. He even chews himself! The horror! And when he's not attacking, Arlo is always looking for his next victim. Maybe even you! If you see this beast lurking in your home, you will want to run away. <laughs> but he is fast. Too fast to outrun. But do not fear. Instead, 
remember these simple tricks, and you might be able to escape. First, give him treats. Arlo cannot resist the taste of snacks. If he likes them, he will munch and treat you nicely. He makes a kind of funny sound when he's munching too. Seriously, this cat can be very cute. But if he doesn't like your snack gift, he'll get angry and bad at it with his paw. Oh no, he hates it. Run, run away. If that doesn't work, give him a bath. He is helpless in water. Cry all you want, spooky kitty. Oh, he seems really spooky mad. If all else fails, put him inside of a giant wheel. Well done, Nixie. And then, while he's distracted... Oh no, he left the wheel. W -w where is he? Nixie, have you seen... Oh! Hey, Arlo. I was just kidding about all that creepy monster talk. You're a very good kitty. Ah! Run away! <laughs> Actually, this kind of tickles. What's today? Yes, it's ball day! Having a ball because today is ball day! Ball day, ball day, ball day, all day! Oh, hey friend! My name's Spud! And today's gonna be the best day because it's... Ball day! You, you don't know what ball day is? Really? Well, you see, ball day is whenever I get a new one of these. So round, so rolly, so ball-y. <sighs> I love you, ball. And you know what else is special about ball day? I never know when it's gonna happen. Whee! Ball day can be any day. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, or even last Tuesday, because ball day is whenever Laura decides to give me a ball. Who's Laura? She's my moon. You know, because I'm a ball. Moo. And my moon said that today is going to be the biggest ball day ever. Hmm, I wonder what she meant by that. Maybe I'm going to get two balls. It could be anything. Anything that has to do with a ball, I mean. Whatever she meant, it's gonna be awesome! Just like every other ball day. Which is why I have the most amazing ball collection in the world. Wanna meet them? This smart looking lady is Brainy. Don't tell the others, but she's my favorite. And you already met my squishy friend, Big Green. Don't tell Brainy, but he's also my favorite. And then here is Little Green, no relation. And of course, there's Sunny. His name is Sunny because he's always in a good mood. Oh, and I call this white one Snowball. I'm still trying to think of a name for this one, but I'm sure I'll come up with one soon. You've probably noticed that I'm really good with names. Oh, and I almost forgot about Ink. Inky? Ugh, why does this keep happening? Well, I guess it's a good thing today is ball day. Ball day started right after I came here to live with Moom and her family. You see, we met in college. She was a student learning how to care for animals like me. And I was just a 300 pound baby that needed taking care of. We were together day after day, month after moon. But then she graduated and I thought I'd never see her again. Until she adopted me. We had the best times together. She wanted to spend every single second with me, but she couldn't hang out in the field with me all day. And I wasn't sure what to do when she wasn't around. I tried some hobbies, like looking for stuff in haystacks and tractor chasing, but nothing seemed to click until Moom got me a ball. It was the first ever ball day. And it was such a big hit that we've celebrated ball day almost a hundred times now. Though oddly, I do not have anywhere near a hundred balls. Weird, right? So now every night when 
I lay down, I think to myself, will tomorrow be ball day? And every day when I wake up, I wonder, is today ball day? I can't wait to get my new ball. Spudly. <gasps> Oh boy, oh boy, I can't wait! <laughs> oh. My. Ball. There can't possibly be a bigger ball than this! It must have taken Moom forever to blow up! And I love it! I think I'm gonna call you Rainbow Sprinkles! Hmm. Or maybe Rainbow Surprise? No, I got it! Lucky! Because that's what I am too! One lucky bull with an amazing moon who loves me more than anything. My name's Tuna, and I have a secret. Do you want to know what it is? My parents sure do. Tuna, what were you doing? You'd love to know where I go all day, wouldn't you? Oh, you think if you give me treats, I'll tell you? Nope, never gonna happen. But I'll take another treat. <laughs> I'm gone for hours at a time. Tuna, come on. How are you doing? That's probably why they put a GPS tracker on me to figure it out. I'm just fascinated by this. This is what you do? But they still don't know. I'll tell you, though. Come closer. Okay, stop. That's perfect. I, Tuna the Cat, I'm a master at tricking people into leaving presents at my house! <laughs> How, you ask? Allow me to enlighten thee. It all begins on my front porch. I sit there, looking cute as a cucumber. I'm so adorable. People passing by can't help but visit. With a face like this, who could resist? To my devious delight, they often bring packages filled with goodies in them. What kind of goodies, you ask? That's for me to know and you to wonder. <laughs> Once they arrive, phase two begins. I distract them with my special moves. Behold, my moves! The tailocopter. The roly-poly. The wall slide. The wiggle and flop. And of course, the loud meow. Simple, but effective. By the time they're finished petting me, they've forgotten all about their things. And they leave! <laughs> Behold, my stuff! This houseplant. This couch! This black brick! This thingy! But hiding my secret has become... When are you coming in? Let's just say, harder to hide? Not from my parents. No. <laughs> but from him. I think he knows. Why can't you just be like the dogs, huh? They know how to mind their own business. No matter. I'm like a ghost. Whoosh. Other than you, no one will ever know my secret. For I am Tuna, a master of deception, a shadow of shadows. Perhaps one day we shall meet, and your stuff shall become mine. <laughs> oh, don't mind if I do. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you should try this. Oh, hi there. Oh, I'm Wend. Oh! Huh. oh I'm okay. <laughs> I, I am okay. Ah, let's try that again. My name's Lenny, and I'm a foodie. Well, technically, I'm a lizard. A bearded dragon, to be precise. But... Foodie is a fancy way of saying, I love to eat. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, these are my favorite snack. Oh, mm, mm, mm. The big ones are the sweetest. Ah, I know what you're thinking. Don't lizards eat bugs? Of course, and they're a great source of protein, if you like your food wiggling. 
But I am a lizard of more refined tastes, thanks to my mom, who always shares her food with me. Well, maybe not always. Don't, don't even think about it. This is my grip. Oh, quinoa and black beans. Looks pretty good. Oh, I love soup. No, no. Oh, just a tiny sip of soup. Oh, uh, cherry tomatoes in season already. Those look really ripe. My name? <laughs> Hello. You gonna eat all that? I, I, I just want a tiny bit. Ah, this world is full of so many unique foods and flavors, and I can't wait to try them all. Ah, uh, wow, what is that? Is that uh, a leafy green? Oh, yuck! You expect me to eat plain, old, boring spinach? It doesn't even have dressing on it. No, 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 no. I said I don't want to, uh, and you can't make me. No, 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 uh-uh, forget it. Oh, cracker. Ha-ha, <laughs> you'll never catch me now. I'm just gonna hide up here for a bit. Ooh, ooh, I think the coast is clear. But I don't understand why this is happening. Is this my world now? Am I destined for a life of boring leafy greens? What about the fruits? Oh, and the soups. Why is mom doing this to me? Did all those shared meals mean nothing to her? No, it has to be something else. Because I know my mom loves me, and, and I love her. We are best buds forever. Oh, maybe Jar Jar knows what's going on. Jar Jar, why do I have to eat leafy greens? I never see you eating leafy greens. No? Not gonna help me? Well, enjoy your spinach-free dog food. Oh, think, Lenny. Think. Mom knows you're a foodie, so why is she trying to feed you leaves? Huh. Come to think of it, I do know that wild bearded dragons eat a lot of leaves. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to eat leafy greens to stay healthy? Is mom just trying to do what's best for me? Oh, oh, I have made a terrible mistake. Mom! Oh, I'm sorry I ran away. I'll eat the leafy greens if you want me to. I suppose a real foodie has to be willing to try anything. I just wish they weren't so bland. Oh, wait. What are you making now? Is that leafy green soup? Oh, 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 I love soup. Oh, Mom, you are a food wizard. I guess leafy greens aren't that bad. Sometimes. Natalia the rescue penguin is finally healthy enough to go back to the wild. There's just one problem. Natalia is afraid of water. Her rescuers have never seen anything like it. Wild penguins spend more than half their life in water. But Natalia doesn't even want to get her feet wet. Poor little penguin. Natalia was rescued only a few weeks ago. Some people found her all alone on the beach, and she seemed really sick. So the rescuers took her back to their rescue center to help her grow and feel better. They gave her a checkup, then took her to their pool to feed her. They figured she'd be the most comfortable there. But she was not. Natalia was so scared, she was shaking. She didn't want to be anywhere near the water. The rescuers weren't sure what to do. They couldn't take her home if she was too scared to swim. They needed a plan to help Natalia love swimming again. So they decided to start small, very small, the smallest pool they could find. But even that seemed scary. She needed some encouragement from her rescuers. And then, once she was in the water, they fed her. 
That way, when she thought of water, she'd think of food. Wait, Natalia, come back! Okay, let's try again. Natalia was still so nervous. But she was really hungry, too. So she gave it a try, with a little more help from her rescuers. Nice job, Natalia! After hand-feeding her for a few days, the rescuers put the food in the water so she'd have to dunk her head to get it. Natalia looked around and... Yes! You're doing great, Natalia! Natalia had made so much progress. She was starting to love her little pool. But now it was time to try the big pool again, the one most like the ocean. She peeked over the edge and... Nope, 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 no way, not doing it. The rescuers didn't know how they were going to convince her. The water was just too deep. They would need some help. And it just so happened that another little penguin was in need of a rescue. Rosita. Just like Natalia, Rosita was rescued from the beach without a family. But unlike Natalia, Rosita loved the water. Now the big question was, could Rosita help Natalia love the ocean? The rescuers introduced them, and Natalia rushed in to say hello. Finally, a penguin friend! The rescuers led Natalia and Rosita to the room with the big pool, a room Natalia did not want to go in. But the second Rosita saw the water, splash! Natalia couldn't believe it. Maybe the water wasn't so scary? She mustered up all her courage and jumped! Ah! But then she was like, hey, this is kind of amazing. Finally, Natalia understood. The water wasn't scary. Water was where a penguin was meant to be. Her rescuers were so relieved. Natalia was over her fears which meant she and Rosita were finally ready to go home. They took Natalia and Rosita on a boat to an island full of penguins and got them ready. Natalia and Rosita said their goodbyes to the rescuers and in Rosita went. But all of a sudden, Natalia was nervous again. Maybe she didn't want to go. She'd forgotten how to be brave. She needed her rescuers help one more time. And with a gentle push, Natalia was home. She was like, oh, right, water. I love that. Hello. I noticed you were noticing this beautiful box. I scratched it myself. I'm Calvin. I'm a big box fan, specifically this box. My one and only box forever and ever. And Honey, I think that we have to throw away your box. What? Why? This box is everything. It's comfortable. It contours to the body. It has a peephole for spying. And a cover for hiding. Plus, I'm always making improvements. Calvin? Did you do this? It really ties the room together. Why would anyone not want this in their living room? Because it's a shredded mess of ribbons? Says who? Me and the box are one. Would you take a nest away from a bird? Or take away cheese from macaroni? Or one of those little birds that eats ticks away from a hippo? You wouldn't, hmm? right? Exactly. I remember when I first found the box. It was filled with knickknacks, nothing of note, really. And yet, it called to me. Calvin, Calvin. I just had to get to it and make it mine. Ah, <sighs> and then I was home. If you need me, I'll be in here. Without the box, where would I sleep? Dirt? Here is one bad option. I'm afraid of heights. He also could sleep in here. Where are the walls? We've got this nice couch. It's got a dog on it. 
And lastly, we have this entire bed that he could sleep on. I choose box. What's this thing? What do you think about your new box? Hmm? Okay, that's fine. I know. Why don't you put all the new boxes in a row and I'll pick one I like. This one! See? Fits me perfectly. We did it! Case closed. Okay, whoa. And that's enough of that. Could a new box do this? Just an update. He still has his box. We're gonna keep it until it disintegrates. <laughs> oh, box. My sweet box. I told you we would be victorious. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh! <gasps> this menace is tricky. He has one mission. Eat everything in the house. <laughs> I see lunch is going well for you. <laughs> and if you don't give him what he wants, you'll pay. He can't be stopped. Or can he? Let's see you get food all the way up here. Wait, no! Not the pizza! Great, you're up here, but you'll never be able to open it. Oh, God, God, come on! <laughs> Feeling pretty proud of yourself, aren't you? Don't even think about it. Tricky! Phew, you might be safe now. Oh no! That's it! You're gonna stay in here until we're done eating. No amount of meows will get you out of there, mister. Wait, no, he can't. What? Get back here! Oh my god! <gasps> <laughs> okay, if you can't be contained, maybe the food can. Welcome to your automatic feeder, Trekkie. Well, well, well. Look who's waiting patiently now. What's happening? What? Well, this is not how you refill a feeder, Greg. Will you get the cat out of the feeder, maybe? Oh. Well, I guess we can't blame you for this one. Okay, but this has to be your fault. You really can't be stopped. What are we gonna do with you, Trekkie? I guess we're just going to have to find a way to coexist. I think we finally found a system that works. Mm -hmm. Strap the lid down. What do you think about it, Trekkie? <laughs> Not a fan? You don't like the new setup? He's so determined. Don't be down, Trekkie. You can't get into everything all the time. Hey! Well, I guess this is okay. We love you, you little food fiend. This is Kevin. He's on his way to see his best friend. <laughs> Captain! Hey, buddy. Hey, bud. They're such good friends. They can basically read each other's minds. Hey, Cap, you thinking what I'm thinking? You bet I am. Golf cart adventure time! They're the kind of friends who never miss a chance to wear matching costumes. Or just sit on the porch thinking about stuff. Hey Cap, what if Earth is like one big tennis ball being thrown through space? Whoa Kev, that's deep. Captain and Kevin wish they could spend every second together. But they can't. They live in different homes and have different families. But even when they aren't in the same place, they've figured out a way to be close. 
That's right. Kevin and Captain know how to video chat. Hey, Kev, what's up? Oof, not much. Just chillin'. Hey, Kev, do I have something in my teeth? I don't think so. Do I have something in my teeth? Check out my new haircut. <laughs> Whoa, Cap, you're looking buff. Thanks, Kev. If you believe, you can achieve. Talking on the phone is fun, but nothing beats being together for real. Captain! Kev, I missed you so much! Me too! Especially when they get to have sleepovers. They like to kick things off with some backyard wrestling. <laughs> followed by quick water breaks. Then more wrestling, more water. Wrestle, water, wrestle, water, wrestle, water, wrestle, water, wrestle, water. Guys, slow down. What's up next? A cruise around town, say hi to the neighbors, grab a treat. Excuse us, can we get two milk bone shakes to go, please? Ooh, uh, can you make mine with extra bones? Head home for a best friend dinner. Ooh, fancy. Gobble down some popcorn. And last but not least, tuck in for a nice bedtime story. There's only one thing about their sleepovers that isn't fun when they have to say goodbye. Bye, Kevin. Kevin and Captain have a friendship that runs deep. It shows us life's better when you can share it with a best friend. And even if you can't always be right next to them, they're always in your heart. Or on the phone. That works too. Presenting Dusty the Dog, Master of Scoots. Tato, sorry about this. Tato can be a bit rude. All right, where were we? Oh, even outside. Here, Dusty's doing his scoots. Tato, let Dusty scoot. <sighs> uh, Tato, could you, could you move, please? Don't, Tato, Tato. Tato, so rude, so impolite. Poor Dusty. Dusty, don't give up scooting. Please, we need you to scoot. Now more than ever. Dusty, I know you're upset. Dusty, no! Oh, you don't need to steal his toy. Dusty, you and Tato shouldn't be fighting. Maybe you could teach him how to scoot. Eh, I don't think he's getting it. 
there's only one pro scooter in this house, and his name is Dusty. Lou, you seem like a dog who loves adventure. Running through the desert, leaping over streams, hanging from ropes off crazy high cliffs. Wait, what? Now that's something you don't see every day. Lou, you got some guts, pup. Because that is really high up. And that's even higher. No, 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 no. That's just, nope, too high. Way too high. <sighs> At least it looks like you know what you're doing. Your parents are kind of experts at exploring and climbing canyons, after all. Good job, new it's what they love to do. And when you join their family, they knew you would too. Oh geez, that's high. Lou, how are you not totally freaking out right now? You're just like, come on up, the view's great. It seems like you aren't afraid of any... Come. Come here. Wait. Come here. You're afraid of... Water? Let's get this straight. Dangling from a rope hundreds of feet off the ground? Totally fine. But jumping into a puddle of water? That's too much? Lou, you are just full of surprises. It shouldn't be a problem though, right? You don't have to like water in order to climb canyons with your family. Hmm, unless when you get to the bottom of a canyon, it's filled with water. Uh-oh. But don't worry. Your family will help you. Just keep swimming. Oh, Just keep are you swimming, swimming Lulu? It's not like you were born knowing how to climb canyons and hang from ropes. You had to learn. It took time, but your confidence grew and grew. So let the water lessons begin. Lesson one, stare at the water and let it know who's boss. Be like, I'm Lou and I'm not afraid of you. Good job, Lou. Lesson two, walking through water. See, you got this. Lesson three, learn to doggy paddle. Good girl. Oh, good girl. Good girl. All right, Lou, time for the final test. Being lowered into a canyon that's filled with water and swimming out. You did it, Lou! And guess what? You get to do it again. Or not. You are happy to see dry land, aren't you? Roll around in that dry, dry dirt like there is no tomorrow. Maybe one day you'll love water just as much as you Oh, that was quick. It's such good swimming. Whoa! Excuse me, coming through. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Stick, 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 stick. Do do do. I have a stick. Do do do. Oh, hi there. My name is Snoop, and I love sticks, like this one or this one. So many sticks. I love my sticks, and my sticks love me. But let's get serious for a second because I'm in a bit of a sticky situation. I am on a very important mission to find the biggest stick in the world. I found small sticks, I found medium sticks, and some pretty large sticks too. But now it's time to find the biggest. It will be mine and I will take it home and make it the centerpiece of my great stick collection. But where could this big gigantic stick be? I have searched the entire world and I can't find it anywhere. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Is it floating in here? Maybe it's over here. Could it be a muddy stick? 
Ah, mud. I'll just relax here for a minute. Okay, break time is over. <laughs> time to find that. No, Dad, I cannot shower right now. It will delay the mission. Don't you know I have to find the biggest stick? It's been my lifelong dream, ever since I decided it was. Could this be it? No, it's definitely this one. What about this one? Let's just take them all home. Gonna take all my sticks home, do do do. Do do do, just me and my sticks. Oh no, who put this here? Don't they know I have sticks to take home? Maybe if I just angle it this way. Well, don't just stand there. Help me save my stick. Just a little to the left. Almost there. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! I have seen so many sticks in my time that I've begun to wonder, will I ever find the biggest stick? What if I find one? And I think it's the biggest. But then later, I find an even bigger one. And so on, and so on, forever and ever. Never ever finding the actual biggest stick. I guess my search will never end. Maybe it's best I just give up. I don't think I'll ever find, wait. <laughs> Do you smell that? It smells like the biggest stick! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Over here, over here! No oh boy, I found it! I found the biggest stick! We gotta get this home quick and add it to the collection. I did it, I found the biggest stick. Yes, I did, do do do. Wow, today was a great day. I found the biggest stick and I can finally rest. Poor Lilo is having a very strange day. One of those lucky, unlucky days. She'd spent her whole life living outside. Then, one morning, she slipped and fell into a barrel. But luckily, someone saw her fall and tipped the barrel over. Aw, little kitten. Her hero, Kyle, scooped her up and brought her inside to make sure she was okay. Lilo wasn't used to being around people, and she wasn't sure about Kyle. He kept rubbing her head, which was nice. It made her feel calm and dry after all that scary, gross water. But then he gave her a bath, which did not feel so nice. At least, at first, she was like, what are you doing? We just got me dry. How's that feel, Katie? Okay, okay, fine. I guess this isn't so bad. Lilo didn't really have a home of her own and she was starting to like Kyle a lot. So she made a decision. Kyle was gonna be her new dad. It was hard for Kyle to say no. I mean, could you say no to Lilo? She needed someone to take care of her after all. And Kyle's family loved her already. Lilo! Lilo! And she loved them right back. She was feeling pretty lucky to have met someone so wonderful. There was just one little problem. One big little problem. I have a 120 pound St. Bernard Winnie. That's right. The biggest dog you've probably ever seen already lived in Kyle's house. So if Lilo was gonna be a part of the family, she'd have to become friends with Winnie. The first time they met, Lilo was pretty nervous. How are you even real? Winnie, on the other hand, was super curious. How are you even real? Uh, Winnie, be careful with the sniffs, okay? Lilo wanted to be brave. She'd come closer now and then, but if Winnie licked or even moved, Lilo was gone. Whoosh! Honestly, I don't blame her. She's so tiny compared to Winnie. But lucky for her, Winnie was patient. Just long enough for Lilo to get her courage to do this. Nose grabs. Lilo was ready to play. And once they started, they never stopped. Except to cuddle, of course. Lilo realized that having such a big furball as a friend could be pretty great now and then. 
try not to get too scared when you finally see Ari the Spooky Cat. Oh, you little cutie. Ari moves so strangely, like some kind of cat crab. Look at her creep. So spooky, so strange. One moment, she's being a regular cat, and then whoosh, scramble, zoom. Actually, it's kind of silly. Just a funny little walk, but also spooky. Ari was a regular old kitty when her mom first adopted her. But the older she grew, the stranger she became. Not that it's bad to be strange. We're all a little strange sometimes. But being so spooky while she's at it and scaring us? Ari, can't you try not being spooky? Not a chance. You have to keep your eyes on Ari. Or she'll find a way to attack! Ah! By now, you're probably pretty scared of Ari. And you might be thinking, Well, this is just a cat. I'll just run away from her. Well, that is a silly thing to think. She is way too fast to outrun. Look at her wall flips! That's actually pretty cool. Whoa! You're like a gymnast, Ari. Or a ninja. Can you teach me how to do that? Ari? Where'd you... Ah! Attacked again! But we haven't even talked about Ari's strangest behavior. It's not the crab walks. It's not the wall flips. It's not... Whatever this is, Ari has a very peculiar best friend. You will never, ever guess who it is. Go on, guess. No, you're wrong. It's an almond. You know, like what you eat for a snack? Her best friend is an almond. Ari, now I've seen it all. What do you even do with an almond for a best friend? Go swimming? In a glass? Go on walks together? Aww. Huh. You know, you and Almond are having a lot of fun. Only someone as strange as you could be besties with a seed. Maybe I was wrong about you, Ari. Maybe you're not spooky at all. You like to do strange things. But you're also so, so sweet. Girl. You're a good little kitty. Oh no! Almond! You smushed your best friend! You are spooky! I knew it! Run away! Run away! Life changed for Jasper the day Jade entered the picture. He was an only dog, and he needed some space. But space wasn't really Jade's thing. Jasper wasn't ready for a cat in his life because he was still figuring out how to be a dog. He had grown up in the shelter and never got a chance to be playful. He was always so serious. When his mom and dad brought him home, they thought he'd be happy to finally run around and play whenever he wanted. But it was like he didn't know what to do. Oh boy, come on. Come on, Jasper. Come on, let's go outside. Instead of playing with toys, he'd follow his mom into the shower. What are you doing? And wouldn't eat treats. He was so afraid of his bed, he'd sleep on a mat in the bathroom. His parents tried to teach him how to have fun. Oh boy, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. But they were worried. Would he ever be able to just be a dog? Then one day, 
they met Jade. They thought Jade could help Jasper find his wild side, as long as she'd give him some time. But as soon as she walked in, she was ready to play. Jasper was fascinated. This tiny little kitten was making noise and drinking from his bowl and sleeping on his bed. Why are you on the floor? She wasn't afraid of him at all. She wasn't afraid of anything. And that made him think he might as well join her. And it wasn't that bad. Kind of nice, actually. Jasper was starting to play. And eat treats. And play with toys. And sleep in a bed. Almost. Jasper had grown to love this tiny, bold kitten. And he was ready to be just as fun. Come here, buddy. What do you do? Sit. Good boy. Ooh, what you drinking? Can I have a taste? She took my job. Sorry, I need this. Gotta run. Blueberry boom. Blueberry zoom. Ooh, thanks, Mom. Oh. What's happening? Yeah, I did kind of steal that straw back there. But I had very good reasons. It was because A, I needed berry fuel. Blueberry fuel. And B, I'm blueberry. Berry fuel is what I call what you call food. I'm talking breakfast, lunch, and dinner. With assorted nibbles and bites throughout the day. Because berry fuel is what I need to do my special berry moves. You already saw a few of them. Want to see more? Just let me warm up for a second. Almost ready, and... Berry zoom! Berry whoosh! Berry bounce! Berry flop! Berry soar! Did, did I just fly? I just flew. Yeah. I did! I doubt you've ever seen another rabbit who could do those kinds of moves. I'm pretty sure I'm the only rabbit on Earth who can. Uh, nobody fact checked that. So you see, I needed berry fuel! So I don't run out of energy. Because if that happens... Well, first, I get a little hangry. Trust me, it's not a good look. But even worse, I start running low on berry power and have to take a nap. And I can't be sleeping when I should be out zooming. Sure, sure, I do look extremely adorable when I'm snoozing. But I'm not trying to be adorable. I'm trying to be powerful. And not just so I can do my moves. It's also for adventures with mom. Did I mention I have the most amazing bunny mom ever? She's the one who gives me all this blueberry fuel. I'll never forget the day we met and I showed her my special berry moves for the first time. She was completely in awe of my abilities, which is probably why we started traveling the world. We have some real hair-raising exploits. Like that time we hopped through that field. Or the time we hopped through that field, but with snow. Ooh, and the time we were on a boat. Just another classic blueberry mom team up. Time to refuel. Mmm, bunny cookie on a stick? Did you bake this, mom? Oh, that's kind of special. A special cookie for a special bunny. Sure, we're big-time explorers, but we have the most fun right here at home. Hey, why'd you stop? <sighs> what was I just talking about? I don't think it was important. Please continue. Anyway, whew, it's getting pretty late. And I've still got one extra special task to take care of. Berry climb! 
Hurry, hurry, hurry. It's almost time. It's almost time. Clear. 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 All clear. Whew. Did it. Every night, I make sure Mom's room is safe, secure, and cozy. So we can have our TV time. I mostly come for the snuggles. But I can't let Mom stay up too late. She might need to go on an adventure tomorrow. With me. Her very special bunny. Pearl the Pitbull is a good girl. She loves her mom and she loves to swim. Look how cute she is paddling in the pool. She's like a sweet little fish. Wow, she really loves the pool. All right, Pearl, I think that's enough swimming for one day. Time to get out of the pool. Oh, get out of the pool. What? Don't you swim away from me. Bad girl. Pearl, you can't swim in the pool all day long. Your mom has to go to work. I have to go to work. Get out of the pool. See? It's time to get out. Okay, that's a good girl. What? Hey! Oh, wow. Bad girl! Pearl, you're being very bad in very many ways. Number one, not listening. Number two, swimming away. Number three. What's this? Aw, did you want to play fetch? Go get it, Pearl. Such a sweet... Wait! Oh, let's go. You must get out of the pool this instant! Finally, being a good girl. Let's get all the pool water off you. Now we can head inside and... Pearl, what are you doing? Pearl, no! Pearl! Oh, now the soap is in the pool. You little stinker, Pearl. Bad girl! Every time I think you're finally listening, you jump right into the water. You are a bad, bad, bad girl! Pearl, you are coming inside and you are not going back into the pool. That's right, I've really had enough. Why are you looking at me like that? Pearl, I know you love the pool, but you already swam a bunch today. And you were bad, let's not forget. It doesn't matter how cute you're being, Papel. Aw, but you're looking at me so sweetly. You just love the pool so much, don't you? Am I being too hard on you, Pearl? No, I'm not. You wouldn't listen. But you're just so happy in that pool. And naughty. And so lovable. No, I can't stay mad at you, Pearl. Go on, get in that pool. You've gotten really good at jumping, Pearl. And fetching. You're just such a happy pup. And a good girl. You got it. We promise it's gonna get better, Bunny. When you first came home, your body was frozen like a statue. You couldn't move a muscle. But don't worry, puppy. We know what's wrong and how to fix it. You have an infection, and it's pretty serious. Your muscles have gotten really stiff. You can't bend your legs or move your mouth. You can't even wag your tail. You must be so uncomfortable. But it won't be forever, Bunny. We won't give up on you. We'll take care of you around the clock until you can move and run just like you used to. First, we need to use this IV tube to put some medicine in your body. That will get rid of the infection. Once it's gone, we can work on making your muscles move. We know you're still achy, but try to get some sleep. Does this ice pack feel nice? Good morning. You look like you're feeling a little better and feeling a little hungry. Let's try to give you some food. It's still tough for you to swallow. You'll have to eat liquid food for now. 
bunny. You're moving your mouth. That's great. And after breakfast, a warm bath will help you relax your stiff muscles. <laughs> of course, we'll take some kisses. And I know it seems a little strange, but wearing this blindfold for a few weeks will help you stay calm. And that'll help your body heal. Just pretend you're visiting the spa. Bunny, your tail is wagging. It means your muscles are starting to work again. Next, let's see what we can do about your legs. Some gentle stretching and a little bit of massage should start to loosen you up. It's gonna take a lot of work to make these muscles move, but we know you can do it. After a few weeks of practice, look at that tail go. You're moving a little better all the time. Do you wanna go play in the yard? Good girl. That grass probably feels great. And you're lifting your head. That's a happy pup. Should we try a walk? It's okay. We'll do most of the work. Oh, turn it. That's a good job. That's a good step. I think you'll be walking on your own real soon. You look happy today, Bunny. We can tell by all that tail wagging. What is it, girl? What do you want to show us? Bunny, you're standing on your own. Oh my gosh, you're so brave and strong. You sure are brave and strong. Does this mean you're ready to? I guess it does. You're walking. Go Bunny. We love seeing you move. We love you, Bunny. And we're so glad that you're feeling all better. Hey there. Oops, <laughs> sorry, jumped too far. Thank you. Okay, let's try that again. <clears throat> Hello! My name is Seamus. I'm a bird. I live in a house, but not a birdhouse. But there's birds here. There's this bird, and this bird, and this bird, and this bird, and that bird, and we all live in the house. But it's not just birds. There's also these things. I don't know what they are. They have wings like birds, but they're not birds, and I'm very confused by them. Until I figure out what they are, I am just going to call them Flappy Tigers. If that is their real name, I think I deserve a prize or something, don't you? But besides birds and the flappy tigers, there's also people! Real people! Giant people! They found me when I was a tiny little baby bird. My feathers looked weird because I was a baby. Now my feathers look like this, just a reminder, but they used to look like this. Grown-up feathers, baby feathers, grown-up feathers, baby feathers. Ah, memories. I would have been a goner if I hadn't been found, but I was found, and that's why I'm here talking to you. The people raised me and got me big and strong until I was ready to go back to the wild, but I didn't have a family. So the people became my family. It's pretty great. I really love it here. The birds, the humans, the flappy tigers too, I guess. It's all just the best. I have many luxurious luxuries in this house that are very special and important to me. For example, each and every morning, I take baths in this little dish, which I will now demonstrate. Watch closely, please. Hello! Oh, I'll get a towel for the mess. Sorry! Don't worry. Nobody's mad about the water. I promise. We're a very close family. They even let me sip right from their drinks. Sip, slurp, sip. Um, <laughs> excuse me, you left the lid on. The lid. The lid. The lid on the drink. I wish to sip the drink, but there's a lid on it. <sighs> so forgetful. I love everybody here. We're always doing fun stuff, basically all the time. Like crazy freestyle bird dance dance-offs. Go, 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 go. Go, go, dance, dance, dance. And we play this game I invented called Attack the Hand. I'm a getcha, I'm a getcha. It's really just the best over here. I love them so much. But there's one little thing that's maybe not exactly 100% perfect even though it doesn't really bother me that much. 
seriously? What's going on with these flappy tigers? They drink sugar water, but I'm not allowed to drink their sugar water? <laughs> what? And everything seems fine, and we're getting along great, and then they flap! <sighs> I've got more studying to do to crack the case. But that's not the point of this story. The point is that I have a big family, and I love them so much! That's all. That's really the whole point. I love them, and I thought you should know it. Oh, I love snow! Snowy snow snow forever snow. Until it's the hot times. When the only thing to do is lay around and be hot. And poor snow pile. And then it's the cold times again. But then it's gone. Love uh, is fleeting. Just one more day. Please, please don't leave me, Snow. My mom says she can't stand to see me like this. So this summer, she's going to try something different. Is that a cool breeze in the air? This is so much better, isn't it, Mom? Mom? Okay. Honestly, it's cold like the cold times, but there's still no snow. I need the snow. Got any better ideas? Ah, I like where this is headed. Ooh, yeah, bring that ice home to me. Ice pool. Is it ready yet? How about now? Oh, sweet, sweet ice pool. But where to go? This isn't an ice pool anymore. It's a sort of warm pool. Don't feel sorry for me. I'll be okay. Wait, what's that? Come on, bud. What do we got? A present for me? What is it? Oh, I don't know. Uh, a giant fan? A, a freezer I can sit in? Oh, I can barely stand it. What do we got, Storm? A letter? Forget the letter. What is that? We got a snow machine, buddy. A snow machine? A machine for snow? A snow machine. I know this is absolutely ridiculous, but it'll be worth it if he loves it. I'm panting over here. I'll open it. I don't have hands to open this. Here goes nothing. I really hope it works. Snow! Snowy snow snow! I missed you! Never leave me again! Snow in the hot times? Yes, please! <laughs> so until I get this again, I've got everything I need right here. Gotta go. When Amber found this baby deer crying for help, she couldn't believe her eyes. She knew right away something was wrong. Where's your mom? Sometimes mama deer will leave their babies for a little while, but this baby deer seemed lost and hungry. I don't have anything. Amber didn't know what to do. Should she take him with her? What if the mama deer was looking for him? Suddenly, the baby deer ran off. Amber thought maybe he'd found his mom. I go back home and I go to bed and I can't stop thinking about him. That night, she went back to check on the baby and saw he still needed help. We couldn't handle it. We came back and found him. Amber knew she had to be this baby deer's rescuer. Okay, now I need some help on what to do. She knew the deer had to eat, but she didn't have any bottles. So she filled a glove with milk, hoping he would like it. Oh. And he did. Oh. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Amber decided to name him Scout. It was a good sign that Scout wanted to eat. 
He was such a brave little deer and wasn't going to give up. Good morning. Oh, you made it. Hang on. Scout couldn't wait to start the day. Amber had watched him all night, and by morning, she already loved him. But she knew she couldn't take care of Scout forever. Wild baby deer need professional help. Luckily, there was an animal shelter nearby. When they got to the shelter, the rescuers couldn't believe how little Scout was. It turns out he was only two days old. If he hadn't asked Amber for help, he'd have been in serious trouble. But now, Scout was trouble-free. With lots of care and love from his rescuers, he grew up and made friends. And one day, when he's old enough, he'll go back to the forest again as a strong, brave, and happy deer. You're gonna be okay, little panda. Panda the dog, that is. But what on earth happened to you? Your fur is tangled up and dirty. When was the last time you had a haircut? A million years ago? <laughs> also, Panda, not to be rude, but you're a little bit stinky. You must be really uncomfortable right now, little guy. You can barely even move. But we know there's a happy little dog under all that fur, and we're gonna get him out. Then we'll find you a forever family all your own. Let's go get you a haircut. Don't be nervous, Panda. You're gonna do great. <clears throat> All strapped in and ready. <laughs> wow, Panda. Your fur is way thicker than we thought. This is gonna take a while. There's a dog under there. He's really sweet, too. He's really sweet. You're being such a good, patient boy. Good. Just keep hanging in there. Does this feel nice, Panda? Yay! I see the ear! Aha! There we go. Panda, it's so good to see you. You seem to be feeling much better already, but you're still pretty stinky. Let's get you in the bathtub and give you a scrub. Ah, all clean. You look like a brand new pup, Panda. Now it's time to find you a forever family. We've got some visitors. Could they be your new parents? Come say hello. <laughs> Look how fast your tail is wagging. You're so happy, little guy. What do you think, Panda? Do you like them? <laughs> we think that means yes. Congrats, pandas. You've got a family now, Panda. You look so cozy in your new bed and snuggled up with your mom. Now, your tail is always wagging. Oh, that tail. A butterfly, Doctor. Butterfly surgery is actually a thing, I guess. This butterfly's wing is hurt, and it's trying to fly away, but it can't because its wing is broken. Will a hero come to his rescue? I walked through this one field, and I looked down, and I noticed that there was a butterfly there just kind of flopping around. Annika saw that the butterfly had hurt his wing, and she knew she had to help. That's when she became an animal rescuer, or should I say, a butterfly rescuer. I thought, well, it's cold, it's October, so I put my finger out and it hopped right on. Annika took the butterfly home to give him all the help and love she could. My first thought was, I have to figure out how to feed this thing. What do butterflies like to eat? She had no idea. I found a video of someone feeding a butterfly an orange. 
I laid it all out, kind of saw what he crawled to. I found out that it was sugar water that they loved. He drinks a lot. Monica helped the bugs so much. He's learning how to glide. And we did a flight practice where I would hold him on my finger and then kind of nudge him forward and flutter down. After a while, the butterfly started trusting Annika and basically became her new best friend. I would take him to the beach. She took him for car rides and on the train. We would ride the train together for 10 hours. People on there freak out. They're like, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's just a butterfly. <laughs> That butterfly and his friend are looking like they're enjoying their life together. He would crawl off my face every once in a while. And he'd crawl on her, even when she was eating. But one day, something bad happened. The butterfly hurt his wing worse than before. When he flapped his wing a little too hard, it broke even more. Annika knew her friend needed her. She was determined to help. She found out how to fix a butterfly wing that had been really badly broken. You have to flip the butterfly upside down and you have to hold it down with something so the body's not squished but the wings are flat. She had to be so careful. The butterfly is really happy now. The wings fit a lot better. Anka saved him twice. And I just kind of thanked him for being my friend, letting me help him. If you see an animal in trouble, don't try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. Hey, check this out. Yeah, I'm kind of a big deal. Name's Chowder, the skateboarding bulldog, guitar riff. And I'm probably the greatest skateboarder who ever lived. Dog category, at least. All day long, I ride down hills, cruising here, there, where else, where else? Oh, that's right, everywhere. I can go so fast, like, zoom, whoa. <laughs> yeah! I've been skateboarding for a while now. That's why I'm so good at it. But I wasn't always the greatest. I used to crash into stuff. Like, a lot. I was kinda terrible. Sometimes I was worried I'd never get good. How was I ever gonna become the greatest? But my parents never stopped believing in me. They're probably my biggest fans. Good boy, Chowder. So I just kept trying. Practice makes perfect, as they say. And me? I'm perfect. Winking sound. Now look at me. I'm the greatest! If you want to skateboard like Chowder, first thing, you need a board. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What is that? Gimme, gimme, gimme! Then, you need plenty of room to practice. We gotta hit the road for that. Have your dad load you into the car. Thank you, Papa. We're here, we're here, it's time! Get your belly on the board. And go! And go! And go! And water break. Good boy. All right, now you can get you back to your board. And go, and go, and go, and... Wait, 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 what's going on? No, we can't be done. We just started. Go ahead, Chatter, time to go home, buddy. Ugh, my least favorite part about skateboarding is when it's over. Can't I at least chew on my board? Chatter, what are you doing? All right, all right. I'll just stand by the door here until it's time again. Fine, fine, fine. I'll go to bed. Chatter. Hey, you can't take this skateboard to bed, buddy. Come on! I just want to board in my dreams. You can't take that to bed with you. No. Life's hard sometimes when you're the best, you know? But no matter what gets in my way, like bed.
bedtime, or doors, or whatever this thing is. I always get back on that board and ride. Is that a dog pulling a cat on a sled? Check out these guys. This is Leo the cat and Camper the dog and their cat dog sled buddies. They go fast, they go slow. They go anywhere they want to go. But how did this sled duo come to be? It all started one day when Camper and Leo were bored at home. They'd run out of things to do. Do you want to? No. Or what about? No. But when Leo saw one of those robo vacuums pass by, he had an idea. Wee! At first, Camper was happy to see Leo having so much fun. But after a while, he started to feel jealous. What did the robo vacuum have that he didn't? And to make things worse, it seemed like the robo vacuum was rubbing it in his face. You are inferior. Ha ha ha. Leo likes me better than you. Beep boop bop. Camper had had it. He wasn't gonna let this robo meanie win. Anything it could do, he could do better. So his parents helped him put a leash on a box that Leo could sit in. And... It worked! Better than Camper ever could have imagined. Camper, this is way more fun than the vacuum. Ouch, that hurts. These two were having the time of their lives. And Leo had the need for speed. Faster, Camper! Okay, Leo! Faster, faster! I'm going as fast as I can! Faster, faster! Leo, I don't want to bump into... The wall. Camper loved pulling Leo, and Leo loved being pulled by Camper. But the house wasn't really the best place for dog cat sledding. Luckily, Christmas was just around the corner, and Leo had the perfect gift idea for the both of them. A snow sled! Camper loved it, but Leo was having second thoughts. It looked fast, like really fast. Did you see that bow just fly off the sled? Leo did not want to be that bow. Snow sledding seemed much more dangerous than inside carpet sledding. But Leo wanted to be brave, and he knew he could trust his sled partner Camper. So he gave it a shot, and what a blast! Leo had never gone this fast on a sled before, or had this much fun. Now all Leo ever wants to do is go sledding in the snow. And when the snow melts, not a problem. It's just a little bit more work for Camper. Um, excuse me, pup? That litter box is for cats. I don't think that's... You know what? Who am I to judge? This quirky girl is Moxie. And believe it or not, she's a dog. Despite the whole litter box thing. But Moxie wasn't always part kitty cat. Not long ago, this pup was looking for a ride. Actually, she didn't just need a ride. Moxie needed a rescue. She was stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. And when she saw Martina's car, she chased it down for miles. But Martina saw her and pulled over to pick her up. Whew, that must have been exhausting, Moxie. Martina drove around to the nearest towns to see if Moxie belonged to anyone. But alas, she did not. She had no family. I know, heartbreaking. But there's no need to worry. Because Martina was like, yeah, you're coming home with me. And she brought Moxie back to her place and made her part of the family. The only problem was, Martina had never had a dog before. She was more of a cat person. In fact, just like Moxie, she had rescued all of her cats from all around the world. Pixie and Dobby from Greece, and Simba from Italy. Quite the group of globetrotters. But now that she had a dog in the mix, Martina was worried. What if the cats didn't like Moxie? And what if Moxie didn't like the cats? But all her worries went away when she saw Moxie fall in love with her clan of cats. <laughs> Oh, 
Moxie couldn't get enough of her new feline friends. And these kitties liked having someone new to play with. Moxie was fitting in with the cat crew just fine. And she had no time for any other puppy shenanigans. It was strictly kitty business. Um, Moxie, you know you're a dog, right? Yeah, nope, she thinks she's a cat. Moxie was the perfect fit for Martina's family. Not only by getting along with the cat crew, but by having the same passion for adventure. Now, whether it's taking a hike or having some doggy kitty playtime, Moxie and the gang are taking the world by storm. One litter box at a time. <laughs> I feel like a Disney princess sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. Meet Julie. You might say she has a way with birds. But it wasn't always this way. One day, Julie noticed a blue jay on her deck who seemed to want to say hi. But what surprised her was that the next day, he was back. And the next day, and the next. Soon, Julie was spending every day with her new feathered friend. So she decided to give him a name, Stormy. Julie would sit very still so that Stormy wouldn't get scared. After a while, it seemed like Stormy was starting to trust her more and more. She knew that every morning she could open her door and her favorite bird would flutter out to see her. Good morning. There we go. Until winter came. Julie missed seeing her friend but she didn't have to wait long. Because when spring returned, there Stormy was. And this time, he brought Walter. Walter couldn't have been friendlier. You're braver than Stormy. Soon, Julie's flock of friends began to grow. Lenny and Squiggy were two of the most playful chickadees in the world. They would come right up to her window. Can Julie come out and play? No matter what Julie was doing, Hi there. She always made time for her friends. Hi guys, hi there. And they loved her. All of Julie's new visitors made her heart full. Until one day, everything changed. Julie had to move. I had to say goodbye to Lenny and Squiggy today and Walter and feed them for the last time. When she got to her new home, she was nervous. She had worked so hard to get the birds to trust her once. Could she do it again? Hi. Every morning, Julie opened the door, but the birds all flew away. She was devastated. She missed Stormy and Walter and Lenny and Squiggy. But Julie wasn't going anywhere. She remembered how she made friends with Stormy. So she brought these new birds tasty treats too. And showed them respect by not getting too close. And after a lot of patience and a lot of peanuts, something amazing happened. Julie named her new pal Morty. And then came Juniper. And Jack and Winnie. And they introduced her to their baby. Julie will never forget her old friends. But she feels lucky to have a whole new group of amazing bird pals. Every time someone tried to rescue Miles, I'll get it. He wouldn't let them get near him. Miles lives alone on the streets, and he's been living without any shelter or anyone to take care of him. He's wild. But when Megan saw a post about Miles, she knew she had to spring into action. Oh, there he is. There he is. Miles was roaming around neighborhoods in California, 
where the temperature would sometimes reach over 100 degrees. Hi, baby. I'm here for you. And Megan knew this poor pup needed a home to keep cool in. You ready to get out of here? She wasn't sure if he would let her get close, but with a sweet treat in her hand, Miles approached Megan. Good boy. Maybe this rescue would be easier than she thought. But as soon as Megan went to get more treats, Miles had backed away to a new shady spot. We're gonna get you out of here. We're gonna get you home. It's okay. Miles wasn't sure how he felt about this stranger. Come here. It's okay, baby. Cookie. Cookie. There you go. But clearly he wasn't too afraid. So it was time to try this rescue for real. Megan took out her leash to give it a try. And then I'm just gonna put this on you, okay? See, it's nothing. But nothing was something to Miles. He was like, whoa, 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 let's back this puppy up. And he did not want any part of Megan's leash. Megan kept trying to use her cookies to get Miles to safety. You want more cookies? But at that point, Miles was too scared. Well, I lost the dog. He was too scared and ran away from me. This rescue had turned into a challenging game of hide and seek, and Megan was determined to keep finding Miles. I found you. He put me on a little hunt. But Miles wouldn't stay put. Every time Megan found him, he'd leave and show up someplace else. Megan had been trying to rescue him for seven hours, which is when she noticed she was almost out of special treats. And as the sun was starting to set, Megan knew she wouldn't be rescuing Miles today. This rescue was just too hard for one person. A few days later, Megan found Miles in a parking lot. Not a safe place for a dog. But she was in luck, because right nearby was a dog park. This time, Megan came with more help. Hi there. Hi there, big boy. And together, they made a plan to save Miles. With the help of some treats, they slowly led Miles into the dog park. Success! But then came the tricky part, getting Miles on the leash. Her friend Courtney was determined to rescue Miles. Slowly, he approached Miles, leash in hand. And with a little encouragement from Megan, Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh my god, I got it. Yay, 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 yay! They did it! Miles was finally on a leash. I can cry. I literally am crying. He said he would do it. He said he could do it. Miles still wasn't sure about his rescuers, but Megan made sure he knew he was in the best hands. Good boy. Just fine. And while he was in the car on the way to his new life, Miles looked back to say goodbye to his days of wildly roaming the streets. Now it was time for Miles to finally be a real dog. And once Miles got the rest he needed, his foster family came along to teach him how to be a house dog. Now, Miles is walking on leash, playing with his fellow pups, and always finding time for a snuggle. Hello, my name is... No, oh, hold on, I need to clean that. Start over! As I was saying, my name is... Ooh, well, that feels nice. <sighs> my name is Mr. Biggles... Oh, no, apparently I'm getting a sweater. Hold on. My name is Mr. Bigglesworth! There, I said it! And yes, I am a bunny with no fur. See, here I am. This is me. And those are my feet. I was just born this way. My brothers and sisters all had fur, but I didn't. Back then, I was kind of worried nobody would like me. Because bunnies are usually so fluffy. And I am not. But a lady adopted me when I was just a little guy. And she thinks that I'm adorable. Hey, Sniffy Nose. Look at you, Sniffy. Yeah, and she gorgeous. I mean, she's not wrong. Even though I don't have fur, I am still very soft and cuddly. Especially when I wear sweatshirts. <gasps> wow, what is that? Some lettuce? 
actually, being hairless is kind of great. First of all, I am very pink. And pink is the color that flamingos is. Second, I get petted all day. <laughs> Third, I have many fashionable sweaters to keep me warm. Like this one. And this one. And my personal favorite, a lobster costume. Sometimes I try to eat the sweaters. They do not taste as good as they look. I get sweaters from my friends all over the world. The envelopes are delicious. Cheeky little feet, don't throw the envelope around. You might think that all I do is sit around in blankets looking cute, but I actually have a very busy schedule. In the morning, my mom feeds me breakfast. Spinach, so fresh. Then I run around this long tube thingy and whoa, what was that? Let's see what's happening with this tube. Oh, okay, nothing scary. After that, I try to open this ball to get a treat. Let's see, oh, oh I did it. And my mom feeds me a banana. Open the ball, get a banana. <gasps> Life is good. After that, I go to visit my best friend. My friend is a giant, humongous, extra large bunny. <laughs> if you ask me, he's a stranger looking bunny than I am. He doesn't even like carrots. But I don't mind. At the end of the day, I'm not even tired. No, sir, not sleepy. Not <laughs> I guess I'm pretty loved. How do I know that? Well, I'm always getting hugs and cuddles. And when it's my birthday, my mom throws me a party. If you have not tried a lettuce cake with grapes on top, you are missing out. Even though I look a little different, I wouldn't want to be any bunny but me. Duck might be the happiest cat in the world. That's right, you heard me. This cat's name is Duck. But she's never once quacked, as far as I know. She's a pretty normal cat. Duck also has a special way of getting around. She doesn't have front legs, so she runs like a dinosaur. Pretty fast, actually. Very fast. But she's not a dinosaur, and she's not a duck. She's just the world's happiest cat. But what is it exactly that makes her such a happy cat? Hmm, so glad you asked. Duck has a very special best friend. Nope, it's not a duck. Duck the cat is best friends with a dog named Bimini. They spend every second wrestling, taking naps together, sitting on each other. You know, best friend stuff. They're a perfect pair, but they weren't always this lucky. Because before they became best friends, Duck and Bimini both felt alone. Duck was only a kitten when her dad adopted her, and she had just lost her front legs, so she was still getting used to walking on only two. Not so easy for a kitten. It took a lot of work and a lot of waddling, but Duck was unstoppable. You're no match for me, small string thing. I am Duck. I am a wild tiger. A jungle leopard. I am Duck. This bag cannot defeat me. Do you know why? Because I am Duck. Duck was starting to feel pretty happy, but she wasn't the happiest cat in the world just yet. That's because she was still missing one thing. Duck had a pretty big family. Like a, um, big family all kinda too big to play with such a tiny kitten. I mean, look at these giants. How was she supposed to wrestle and squish any of these big pups? But lucky for Duck, there was someone in the family who was the perfect size. Nope, it is not a duck. I promise the only duck in this story is a cat. It was Bimini. Bimini had always been the smallest pup in the house, so she'd felt a little left out. 
until Duck arrived. Now Bimini is a happy dog, and Duck is the world's happiest cat. Just look at these two. A tiny pup and an even tinier cat, whose name is Duck. Wait, did she just quack? Oh, hi! My name is Octopus and I am an Egbert. Oh, wait! No, my name is Egbert and I am an octopus. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. I don't get too many visitors down here on the seafloor. In fact, <laughs> I have just one friend. And get this. She's a human. She's got these funny tentacles, which she lets me sit on. She calls them fingers, but I know a tentacle when I see one. Whenever she comes to visit, I like to give her a little boop to say hello. Boop. Boop, boop. 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 Hi. I try to get her to come into my shell house, but she doesn't ever follow me inside. I think she might be too big. Or maybe she's too busy for a tour. But I don't mind, because she always brings me food. Mm -mm -mm. It is delicious. Mm. Oh, sometimes she forgets to take the food out of the jar. It's no big deal. I just give the lid a little twist. And then it's lunch time! I gotta be careful with the treats she brings, though, because of fish. Hey, back off! This isn't your food. My friend gave it to me. Whoo, it's a jungle out there. A very wet jungle. <laughs> My friend likes to bring me gifts, too. Ooh, I love that shell. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you turn that a little? I want to see this side of my face. <laughs> oh, uh, another shell. <laughs> nah, no, 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 thank you. I have several already. But, oh, I like this, uh, well, whatever this is. My friend is super generous. Oh, and she's also very helpful. One time, there was a really heavy log on my stuff. Can you believe that? I couldn't move it myself. It was just way too big for a little octopus. So I got my friend's attention. And she helped me out right away. Yes! Oh, my precious shells, how I'd miss you. Mm. Trust me, if you haven't met a human yet, definitely give it a try. They get the egg bird seal of approval. Hey, you, get out of there. Who, me? You are not allowed to be. <gasps> Wait a second, is that who I think it is? Yeah, it's me, Chunk. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Chunk! Why didn't you say it was you? Oopsie. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Chunk actually is allowed to be here. In fact, he's the most famous groundhog in his neighborhood. Everyone loves him. Or at least now they do. When Jeff first realized someone was stealing from his garden, he was pretty mad. But once he realized it was Chunk on his wildlife cameras, well, he couldn't stay mad. I mean, come on. Look at that face. So instead of kicking Chunk out, Jeff decided to make a very special corner of the garden just for Chunk and his family. Oh, did I forget to mention? There's a whole groundhog gang chowing down on all these treats. Meet the Chunks. This is my beautiful lady, Nibbles. I love you, Chunky. Honey, <laughs> I'm eating. And this little fella right here is our son, Snacks. Hey, guys. 
As you can see, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Cause just like his parents, Snacks loves to eat. Oh, 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 this is so good! But one day, when Jeff was watching Snacks munch on some leafy greens, he noticed something different about Snacks. Snacks' teeth were really overgrown. And every time he chewed, his teeth would poke his nose. Ouch! And even worse, all that poking was getting in the way of Snacks' snacking. I just can't. Oh, this is impossible! Jeff could see that Snacks was struggling. So he went online to search for some way to help. And he learned that Snacks needed to take a trip to the vet. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, hey, Jeff. I'm ready to go. It's time to fix these chompers. Uh. Taking snacks to the vet. Woohoo! Let's do this! The vet carefully trimmed Snacks' teeth so he could eat without hurting himself. Look how stinking cute he is. I am pretty cute, aren't I? <laughs> and it worked. Snacks was back to his old snacking self. For a while, Snacks was doing well. He had no problem chowing down on Jeff's endless garden buffet. Mm, mm, guys, oh, you gotta try this! But then... This is the best food I have ever had! Ow! Snacks' teeth were a problem again. They'd grown right back to being way too long. It was time for another visit to the vet. And this time, they'd have to get a little more serious. Back to round two. Yeah, Jeff, I think it's time to take these pearly whites out. And that's exactly what they did. The vet said Snacks' teeth would just keep growing back, so it was time to remove them once and for all. The vet took out Snacks' uncomfortable teeth. Wow! Look at those things! And soon after his surgery, Snacks was right back to his normal snacking routine. And this time, for good. Hmm. Oh, this feels so much better! Do you mind? Poor little puppy. Sage's skin is really hurt. He can't grow hair on more than half of his body. But even though he feels achy all the time, he has a ton of love in his heart. Don't you worry, little pup. You're safe in our lap. We're going to do whatever it takes to heal your skin. You were so nervous at the shelter, but the moment we got home... Go get it, Sage! It's like you're a whole new pup. Because you know you're safe and loved. Your brother Sparky can't wait until you're all better. He's ready to snuggle you all day long if that's what it takes. But our job isn't over, Sage. In fact, it hasn't even begun. We need to help your skin heal. That means you'll have to start wearing doggy PJs. Looking good, Sage. The vet says you need to start taking medicine, but it doesn't taste very good. What if we put it in some yummy food? There you go, pup. You'll need to eat your vitamins every day, but that's not all. You need special baths, too. You're so tiny, that tub looks like a pool. Let's get you all dry. Spa day! And into your favorite jammies. Good night, Sage. Let's see how you're feeling tomorrow. Good morning, pup. A sneeze. Is something else wrong? It's not just Sage's skin that's hurt. He's coughing and sniffling, too. When we listen with our stethoscope, you sound like you're wheezing. We'll try washing all your toys and bowls. We want to get everything clean in case there are germs. And we'll keep a close eye on you. We're a little worried. Sparky's worried, too. We hope you feel better soon, Sage. Hey, little pup, you're being so playful today. Feeling good enough for an octopus battle. Good boy. You're finally over your cold. You just needed time and love to feel better. 
Sometimes that's the best medicine there is. Sparky can't wait for more walks and tug of war. And with every day that passes, you have more and more hair showing. Until finally, Sage, your fur is back. Look at that smile. No need to wear clothes anymore. You have a coat of your own. <coughs> of course, you can keep your favorite PJs. When we met you, you were so sad and so achy. But now, you're feeling amazing. And your family couldn't be happier. This is the face Bo's mom sees when she wakes up each morning. This grumpy face. It's like, Bo, what's going on? Are you mad? Nope, that's just how Bo looks all the time. When mom gets home, when he gets a hundred hugs, it's how Bo looks, whether he's happy or not. But when Bo's mom brought home Aiden the Dalmatian, <laughs> Bo was definitely not happy. Seriously. He was like, Mom, what is that? Aiden was a little nervous about having a cat brother, and it didn't help when that brother looked like this. Bo kept making a grumpy face but actually kind of seemed to like Aiden. Until Aiden tried to play. Then Bo got real grumpy again. No. He's a cat, he doesn't play. Yes, that's correct. He's actually mad, Aiden. Careful. But was that gonna stop Aiden? N O. No way. Get your mouth off my head. But I love you. Aiden wasn't a dog who gave up easily. Or maybe he just didn't know how to give up. It was like he was going to do whatever it took to get Bo to like him. Aiden, Aiden, get off. Aiden. Oh, my God. But it didn't work. Bo got grumpier and grumpier. He wanted to be left alone, but he couldn't hide from Aiden anywhere. He had no choice. He'd have to live on tables from now on. Don't tell him I'm up here. But sooner or later, <laughs> Aiden found him. You have to love me. No, I don't do that. You have to! Never! And then one day, something kind of funny happened. Bo and Aiden's mom walked into the bedroom and saw them together. We don't know when it happened or how it happened, but they both started to just like each other. Or Bo probably likes Aiden? Again, it's really hard to tell with Bo. But seeing as how they spend every single second together, it's a pretty good guess that Bo does love Aiden. Most of the time. B the cat has a very important job. I mean, if she doesn't pet these chickens, who will? And what about these goats? They need pets too, you know. Oh, and the pig. We absolutely cannot forget about this pig. Uh, but not that. That's just a sandwich. But B isn't just petting everyone for fun. Well, not just for fun. She's actually making sure all the animals at the hospital know that they're safe and loved. It's a busy job for one cat, but B doesn't mind. Because she remembers when she was a patient here. She was brought in as a stray kitten and was really afraid of everything. But the vets were so nice to her. 
which made being in the hospital a lot less scary. Bee loved all the attention the vets gave her, and they loved having her around. So when Bee got better, instead of finding someone else to adopt her, they decided to adopt her themselves. That was the second greatest day of her life. We'll get to the first greatest in a bit. Bee realized that other animals staying at the hospital probably felt nervous too. So she made it her mission to make every new patient feel safe and comfortable. There, there. Everything's gonna get better soon. It's all good. We are gonna take care of you. You got nothing to worry about, friend. Uh, B, that is not a patient. That is a slice of pizza. And that is a taco. Okay, you're doing great. Life at the hospital was pretty perfect, except for one thing. No matter how many pets she gave, or how many new friends she made, eventually the patients always went home. But that was a good thing. After all, she didn't want them to need a vet. Still, she felt a little lonely sometimes. Then one day, everything changed. When Peggy arrived. Peggy was a stray kitten just like Bee, who'd injured her paw and needed time to heal. Bee could sense that there was something special about this new patient. And when Bee tried to give her a welcome pet, Peggy petted right back. Soon, Peggy started following Bee everywhere and doing everything Bee did. If Bee wanted to watch bird videos, Peggy did too. If Bee wanted to spin french fries, Peggy did too. Wait, is french fry spinning some kind of cat game? And if so, what are the rules? And best of all, Peggy loved taking care of the other patients, just like Bee. Usually they did the rounds together, but sometimes Peggy handled it all by herself. Because even a dedicated hospital cat like Bee can't be on duty all the time. Bee and Peggy became really close. They were like sisters. Bee was so happy, but she was sad too, because she knew eventually someone would show up to take Peggy home. Or at least that's what she thought. But the vets had fallen in love with Peggy just like Bee had. And since Peggy didn't already have a home, they decided to adopt her just like they did with Bee. The two of them were gonna be cat sisters and best friends forever. And when Bee realized that, you guessed it, that was the greatest day of her life.
help the kittens find the subscribe button.